Stop being ridiculous. If you hate our current lifestyle, then just get the hell out of here. You're right. Excuse me? I understand. I'll leave now. When I agreed to what he had said, my husband, Nathan, began to panic. Hey, do you know what this means? If you're leaving, it means we're getting a divorce, you know? Yes, well, I intend to do that. I'll send you the divorce papers over mail, so sign it. And send it back to me at my parents' house, okay? You... Are you being serious right now? Yes, I am dead serious. You... How dare you divorce me? Shut the hell up. I mean, you're so annoying, you scumbag. What? Shut the hell up. You're the one who told me to leave if I didn't like it. So that's why I'm leaving. Quit being a wimp. Uh, um... Shut up. Just don't say anything anymore. I'll send you the divorce papers later on. So just hurry and sign them. And give them back to me, you idiot. My name is Jenny. I met my husband, Nathan, through our mutual friend. I had never had such experience with love before, but I was attracted to him because of his willingness to take the lead. At first, there were no problems in my life with my husband and we had a happy and peaceful time, but after a few months of marriage, things began to not look good. The reason why for this is because of my mother-in-law, Kendra, and my sister-in-law, Tanya, and my husband, is no exception. Before marriage, I kept some distance with my in-laws reasonably well, but after marriage, that distance was gone. Kendra would call me every single day. Hey, Jenny. I haven't received any money from you yet. I beg your pardon? What are you talking about? What, you haven't heard from Nathan? He has been sending me money since he began working. Is that so? Well, I've never heard about that from him. Well then, please make sure to send the money for this month. Now, wait a minute. I can't have you talking to me about it. Please talk to Nathan directly about it. Oh, and why must I do that? Because that was decided something between you and Nathan, right? It's not something I could just go ahead with it. Ugh, you're a pretty annoying wife, aren't you? I got a little irritated hearing that, so I hung up the phone and called my husband. I got a call from your mother, something about sending money to her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I never heard about it. What? It's what I used to do when I was single, you know? Since we're married now, it's not something I should be doing, right? I'm married and have a family on my own, too. It seems like your mother doesn't think that way. Because I received a phone call from her urging me to send her money. What? Really? Oh, is that so? Then, can you send her $500, Jenny? What? Does that mean that you'll pay back? Oh, no way. We are now a married couple, and the money you earn, Jenny, and the money I earn belong to the both of us, right? So that's why I want you to send Mom the money. Well, I can't do that. If you want to continue sending money to your mother, you have to send the money from your salary. What? Well, hearing you say that, I don't feel like we're a married couple. My husband was babbling on, but I hung up the phone. I didn't even know he was sending money to his mother, and I couldn't understand the logic of sending money to Kendra from the money I earned. Fortunately, we both work and have some enough money. But I would rather save for my future kids, whom I have yet to see, than send $500 to Kendra. After that, Kendra never asked me for money after that, and I am sure my husband was probably paying for it. But there was another issue. After three months of marriage, my husband started urging me to visit his parents. Can we visit my mom tomorrow? Well, I have work, so I can't. What? You can't visit again? We haven't been there for more than a month now, right? Yeah, I guess so. 
I really want to visit them sometimes, you know. For what? Well, you can go there and help out cleaning or cooking meals. What? Why? What do you mean, why? You're my wife, Jenny, aren't you? You are our family too, you know. Okay, so? Isn't it normal for you to take care and support my parents? Yeah, it's normal. Since we're a family now, we should take care of each other, right? You do know pretty well. So then. No, no, cleaning and cooking is not necessary, don't you think? Huh? Why? What do you mean, why? Your sister Tanya is there with your parents, isn't she? But Tanya's busy with work. What? But I have work too. What's so different between me and Tanya? Well, yeah, but. No matter what my husband says, there is no need for me to go. Because my sister in law, Tanya, who is single, is at my parents in law's house. And she can just help out Kendra. Well, I am sure that Tanya could be really busy. Because she is busy making unannounced visits to our house. But the only time she succeeded in barging into our house was only once. Other than that, Tanya made many daring attempts, but I have been ignoring all her attempts. When she first came unannounced, it was so terrible that I decided never to invite Tanya into our home again. My husband usually gets home around 11 pm, but I get home around 6 pm. Tanya must have known this because she came over to our house at 6 30 pm unannounced. Hey, Auntie, cook me something. I'm super hungry. Tanya and I are one year apart. If I am an auntie, she must be an auntie too, is what I thought to myself. She rushed in without a word to even greet me, and this was the first thing she said. There's no limit to her rudeness. I've already eaten dinner outside, so I don't plan to cook. What? Aren't you going to cook dinner for Nathan? We don't have the same schedule to eat a proper dinner together, so we each eat out on our own for dinners. Oh, I see. Then just cook me something. Why should I do that? I'm hungry. Okay, I see. Then I'll charge you $15 for it. Excuse me? You want me to cook you dinner, right? I'll cook you dinner, so please pay for it. What? You're unbelievable. What do you mean? Do you normally charge money from your relatives? Well, no, I don't normally. Then don't charge me for it. I only said I won't charge money normally. But this is not a normal situation. It's pretty abnormal. My husband's sister suddenly barges in, doesn't even say hello, and asks me to cook something because she's hungry. Even though I already had dinner. This isn't normal at all, don't you think? So please pay up $15 first. Then Tanya turned red and left the house. And when my husband came home, he began to complain to me. Tanya, she was crying. I heard that when Tanya asked you to cook dinner for her, you asked her to pay up, is that right? Yeah, I said that. Why would you say that? I was trying to be rude to someone who was rude to me in the first place. What? How could Tanya be rude to you? You really don't know? Well, you know, there are things you can't judge without hearing both sides of the story. Your sister came to our house without any prior notice and demanded me to cook dinner for her without even saying hello. So, who do you think is really rude here? I see how it is. Well, Tanya really could have greeted you and said hello. I'll talk to Tanya about it. Nathan didn't get the point at all. It's not that. Everything Tanya did was all rude. Coming here without any prior notice, asking for dinner, not saying hello, just literally everything. I don't know why Nathan doesn't realize that. The next day, Tanya visited our house without learning her lesson. I just continue to pretend that I wasn't at home. In the meantime, the day to go on our honeymoon is approaching. But I am hesitant to go. To be honest, I don't want to go on this trip. 
It would have been fun if we had gone right after we got married, but due to our schedules, we are going now. Who can enjoy a honeymoon under such circumstances? Hey, um, about the honeymoon. What's up? It's still over a month away, right? I'm thinking that I want to cancel it. Even if we cancel now, there wouldn't be any cancellation fee. What's wrong all of a sudden? You've been looking forward to it so much. It's just... Seeing how you are lately like this, I got really disappointed. You'd say things like I joined your family as your wife. I mean, I don't agree with what you say at all on some things. I see. You're right, Jenny. I've been kind of stuck in this idea of what marriage should be like. I'm sorry. But thank you for reminding me. You should be the one I should value the most. I was surprised at how honestly I was convinced by Nathan. Then my husband must have talked to Kendra and Tanya because Kendra's persistent phone calls and Tanya's unannounced visits to our house suddenly stopped. What the heck? If Nathan would have acted out so quickly like this, I should have had a serious talk with him earlier on. I knew I could count on him to take leadership, but I was wrong. I was completely fooled by my husband's trick. It was the day we returned from our honeymoon. When I opened the front door, the living room was somewhat noisy. I didn't need to see their face to know who it was. What are you two doing here? Oh, welcome home. What do you mean, what are we doing here? We were looking after your house while you both were gone. Nathan! Were you able to get the body cream which I asked you to get? Oh yeah, I did. Yay, thank you. Wait, hold on a minute now. You gave our key to them too? Yeah, if anything happens while we're gone, that would be a hassle, right? I can't believe this. Did you hear what I said to you before we went to this honeymoon? My husband looks at me like I'm a pain in the butt. We had a good time, didn't we? For what? For the honeymoon. So? So, we're all living together from now on. So it's great that we got to make memories with just the two of us. You're the worst. You were testing me? You know, I'll let you in on something. You're the one who's the fool if you got deceived like that. You're so naive, you're so quick to trust people. Well, I took the risk to show you what the reality is. You should be grateful. That sounds like the victim has more issues than the person who deceived the victim. That's just jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Women tend to do that, don't they? It's a really bad habit of them. I beg your pardon? If you're the one deceiving a person, you're clearly in the wrong. You seem to think you're right about everything, and that's a very bad habit of yours. Stop being ridiculous. If you hate our current lifestyle, then just get the hell out of here. You're right. Excuse me? I understand. I'll leave now. When I agreed to what he had said, my husband, Nathan, began to panic. Hey, do you know what this means? If you're leaving, it means we're getting a divorce, you know? Yes, well, I intend to do that. I'll send you the divorce papers over mail, so sign it. And send it back to me at my parents' house, okay? You, are you being serious right now? Yes, I am dead serious. You, how dare you divorce me? Shut the hell up. I mean, you're so annoying, you scumbag. What? Shut the hell up. You're the one who told me to leave if I didn't like it. So that's why I'm leaving. Quit being a wimp. <sighs> um. Shut up. Just don't say anything anymore. I'll send you the divorce papers later on. So just hurry and sign them and give them back to me, you idiot. Oh. Saying that, I just had enough and I left the house. Well, that was the first time in a while that I got so irritated and angry like that. I'm the type of person who values goodness, but these people are just completely cruel. But the phone hasn't stopped ringing once since I left them. Hmm, how annoying. I'll turn off the phone. 
when I got back to my parents' house, both my parents were waiting for me. Oh, sweetie, what in the world happened? It seems like Nathan is on his way over here. What? So I have to see his face again, huh? I really don't want to. What's going on? Nathan sounded pretty desperate. Mmm, well, I just got super mad at him. What? I got super mad at him. Oh no! Hey, did you actually snap and get super angry at him? Yeah, I actually snapped and got super angry at him. I told him off, big time. My goodness, you're old enough to know better. Yeah, but hear me out. I told my parents the whole story. You were too nice to him. You should have said more. Well, I guess it's in our blood, huh? Oh well, I'm sure that idiot will be here soon. I'll make sure to teach him something. No, you both need to calm down. I will handle him, so don't ever come out here. Okay, Dad. About five minutes later, my husband arrived. I opened the living room door a little to see what was going on and I saw Nathan apologizing to my dad with tears in his eyes. Then suddenly my husband raised his voice. Jenny, you're here aren't you? Oh Jenny, I'm really sorry. Oh, I love you Jenny. Ugh, he's such a pain in the butt. He is not worth listening to. I've been chasing you Jenny ever since we started dating. But you don't love me as much as I love you, right? So when we got married, I wanted you to support me even if it's just a little. I know I asked a lot from you. I never intended to live with mom from the beginning. I just want to prove that you care about me. Hey, Jenny, you're here, right? Please answer. Answer me, please. Since nobody responded, my husband barged in and opened the door to the living room. Hey, Jenny. What? Where's Jenny? She left as she was saying, you're a pain in the butt. What? Jenny was there until you said, Jenny, I know you're there. Jenny, I'm really sorry. I love you. And to that, she said, you're a pain in the butt. I think she's getting the divorce papers by now. Nathan, if you really love Jenny, just stop trying to test her. My daughter has decided already that she will divorce you. So, just give up. My mom told me that this kind of conversation had been going on after I left the house. I would do anything to divorce my husband. And my husband, who does not at all agree in divorcing me, we were both completely against each other. I felt like this divorce just went on and on. It took a year and a half for the court to issue a ruling. Although I won and got to divorce in the end, I kept on seeing my ex-husband and how pathetic he was, and I thought I had enough with marriage. But my ex-husband's last words to me were like this. I'll be your first and last companion for the rest of your life. And hearing this made me so angry. Well, at any rate, I am happy that we are divorced finally. The marriage lasted less than a year, so we both couldn't claim for any compensation. The legal fees were a pain, but it was a learning experience. Five years have passed since then and I have remarried. I was blessed with a beautiful child. When I first got divorced, I never thought I would start a relationship with someone else, but time has helped me with that thought. I thought I would never see my ex-husband again, but as fate would have it, I would see him again. That day, I was shopping with my family at a newly built shopping mall. When I heard my name called, I turned around to see my ex-husband, who looked a little exhausted. We were neighbors, but we didn't really get a chance to see each other very often. Are you still single? He says this as he smirks, and it looks creepy as ever. Oh honey, there was pots and pans over there. It's something that you like, honey. Oh, you know each other? My husband, who was holding our son, came over to see what was going on. No, I don't know him. Where were the pots and pans? They're here. There, there, hold on now. My husband chased after my son, who started to run. 
My ex-husband saw the whole thing and he had a frozen look on his face. You must be mistaking me for someone else. I don't know you. Well then, I bet that man is still single. Well, I don't really care. I'm so happy right now, there's no need to look back on the past. I will go on with my life, cherishing my current husband, who is honest with me about my feelings, and with my adorable son. Thank you for watching until the end! Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.